dinoflagellates. As we have seen that dinoflagellates belongs to alveolata and the name uh, suggests that it has got two flagella, isn't it? Two flagella, uh, of course, that is why it is uh, dinoflagellate. Uh, and also it is, you know, it's a bicon, right? Belongs to the bicons, a uh, biconta. So the, it belongs to alveolata. Uh, and uh, we have seen that zooxanthellae of the coral reef, uh, that, that is basically symbiodinium. Symbiodinium is a genus of a dinoflagellate. And symbiodinium is present in any kind of coral reef that you can see in, right? So soft coral or hard coral, any kinds of coral reef, you can see that this zooxanthellae that is basically the, the genus symbiodinium as its photosynthetic partner of the, the cnidarian. So when this uh, symbiodinium dies, the coral reef gets bleached, you know, and there is irrevocable process and there is a repercussion of climate change. You know, ocean acidification is a very major uh, the culprit and why the coral reefs around the world is uh, getting devastated. So it belongs to a Straminopyle, Alveolate and Rhizarian supergroup, SAR supergroup, right? Alveolata belongs to SAR supergroup. The current phylogenetic evidence point to this direction. And it's it's uh, an endosymbiont in Nidarians to form the, the coral reef. And it's highly pH sensitive. World's ocean pH is now decreased right so as you know the pH scale is in log scale right and because it's a log scale it's exponential a little bit change itself uh, is uh, leading to tremendous change in the real life you know the pH for the world's ocean had been 8.2 for the last 300 million years and right now the average pH of the ocean is 8.1 the change is just 0.1 uh, you know the scale the pH scale but remember pH scale is logarithmic so even point one change seemingly very minute but no it's tremendous a big change you know uh, and yes so why what causes this uh, change the tremendous change in the pH because the excess CO2 in the atmosphere gets dissolved in the you know ocean as carbonic acid and that drives down the pH of the world's oceans so uh, that ocean acidification leads to death of the symbiodinium and that is the reason why uh, the coral reefs are getting bleached you know and as you can see here the dinoflagellates belong to alveolata the name suggests that there are gas filled uh, you know vesicles underneath its plasma membrane right and dinoflagellates yes other members of alveolata are apicomplexins uh, you know and ciliates ciliates have got trichosis like paramecium apicomplexins are very very uh, you know notorious human pathogens like um, plasmodium vivax or uh, you know toxoplasma like gontii so this is how it looks like the bleached coral reef in lecture tubes yeah of course this is a, this is a very sad reality of the current day world so we all have to uh, unite our hands disrespective of our caste or creed or nationality or gender we all have to work towards uh, the planet earth the sustainability is extremely important friends you know and that is the only solution to prevent this uh, preventable calamity the uh, you know the ocean acidification happening so dinoflagellate is some many of the dinoflagellates forms hazardous algal blooms HABs hazardous algal blooms one example is Carinia brevis it's it forms something called red tide so massive scale uh, the tide that the waves itself is becoming red color you know from a uh, distance so this is an aerial photograph taken from uh, the helicopter or from the aircraft so you can see that this is a big beach area kilometers you can see this is a cruise liner it's a major it's a big ship you see such a small size isn't it so you can guess out what would be the area of this right? it's a big beach maybe many kilometers uh, full of red color because of the bloom you know the red bloom hazardous algal bloom so you can see here the red tide in another uh, you know inlet so this kind of closed uh, you know inlet right these are called inlets yeah so gymnodinium is another very important dinoflagellate genus causing hazardous algal blooms here you can see that this is all the red tide and uh, a guy is swimming here 
So sometimes it is toxic, but you cannot call that all kinds of uh, dinoflagellate red tides are toxic. For example, gymnotinium are usually not toxic. And even if it is toxic, you know, you really need a, a large quantity to have a clinically significant result in human beings. So that is why in the case of Carina brevis, uh, going one slide back, Carina brevis, so it has got brevitoxin. The neurotoxin is called brevitoxin. And even if you drink the water, uh, you might not be, uh, you know, having any clinical significance. But if you eat the shellfish from the contaminated, uh, you know, contaminated habitat, for example, abalone, you know, or uh, oyster uh, that is being cultivated in those locations, uh, it, it can have uh, serious injuries on human beings too. The reason is that these, uh, you know, these uh, shellfish can ingest a large quantity of this uh, carenia, the dinoflagellate, that is the, what they eat, right? So the toxin gets amplified, the biomagnification can happen, right? So that is why it's dangerous to consume the food sub, you know, uh, food producers from those locations with hazardous algal blooms. Gonia lax is another uh, a very important dinoflagellate genus. Gonia lax. You can see this is the microscopic picture, and this is how the red tide of the Gonia lax looks like. Feasteria is another uh, important, uh, right, a dinoflagellate because uh, this feasteria can lead to the fish disease, the infectious disease in fish, right? Fiesteria. Nocticula is another very important uh, genus of the dinoflagellate, especially nocticula scintillists. So this causes uh, bioluminescent, especially algal blooms, which are bioluminescent, nocticula scintillans blooms. And as I told you earlier also in the nocticula blooms, uh, there are papers that says that, uh, you know, the snow melt in Himalayas can lead to the nocticular blooms in uh, in the Arabian Ocean. So that kind of link remains elusive, but still the new uh, scientific curiosity driven scientific discoveries are enlightening. So many of these kind of very interesting facets of the how the nature works. So there are more than 18 genera of the dinoflagellates uh, which are bioluminescent, very interesting. Right? So bioluminescent seems to be very common inside the dinoflagellates, especially nocticula. So they contain uh, a small uh, organ organelles called scintillon. So these are individual cytoplasmic bodies, you know the bodies which are uh, distributed in the cytoplasm, about 0.5 micrometer in diameter. So it's really, really small. So it's smaller than uh, a bacteria, you know, scintillon, the bodies. So it's distributed mainly in the cortical region of the cell, out pockets of the main cell vacuole. So it's like out pockets of the vacuole in the cortical region of the cell, uh, scintillons uh, distributed. And this uh, organelle, uh, this uh, body is rather, you cannot call it as an organelle, it's, uh, it's more like a uh, cytoplasmic bodies, right? So this contains dinoflagellate luciferase. Remember in fireflies, why the fireflies is uh, bioluminescent? Luciferin luciferase, enzyme substrate reaction, right? So here the enzyme is luciferase and substrate is luciferin. So the luciferase is the main enzyme involved with the dinoflagellate bioluminescence and luciferin is a chlorophyll derived uh, tetrapyrrol ring that acts as a substrate to the light producing reaction. So that is how this, uh, you know, this uh, dinoflagellate, especially uh, this uh, several of this bioluminescent genus like Nocticula can bioluminous, you know, and this is the uh, the phylogenetic systematics within the dinoflagellates, right? So I'm not really covering everything in detail, but yeah, this is how it looks like. So as per the latest evidence, so you can see it here is that all the PK. Uh, dinoflagellates have single origin that means all thicate forms one clade so this particular dot and all its descendants have theca so theca is the cell armor you know so that is why that uh, uh, this dinoflagellates have got a, a typical pellicle like structure uh, the theca is made up of cellulose you know the, the disc like cellulose particles so all the thicate uh, the dinoflagellates together form one uh, clade, 
according to this uh, you know this particular the tree as you can see here and on the basis uh, on the base of this tree is polyphyletic gymnodineals so gymnodineals alone doesn't form any clade unless you also include the thicate group then gymnodineals as such is not natural you see it's a polyphyletic clade so gymnodineals plus all the thicate together is what you call it as core dinoflagellate and on the base of uh, that tree is nocticulales right and then all the other apic complex so this is what you call this entire tree is called the dinoflagellate this this section including parkinzo then sentineals nocticulales and gymnodineals plus all the thicate right uh, dinoflagellate together is called the dinoflagellate so all the dinoflagellate together forms one clade you know it is actually from this ancestor that arisen the complete lineage of the dinoflagellate so dinoflagellates are a natural group it's a monophyletic group it's not polyphyletic only uh, you know only a problem inside dinoflagellate is that uh, some of the sections are not really monophyletic for example gymnodineals that needs a, a reconsideration in light of modern phylogenetic systematics